So good evening, everyone. Thank you for being here. It's 7 p.m. in Poland. And uh, yeah, so good morning, good evening, good afternoon, good night, wherever you are. I know someone from Australia said they'd try to be up at 3 a.m. for this talk, so thank you. Uh, do give me a one in the chat to let me know that I am coming through correctly, that the audio is good. Let me check. Yep, yeah, looks like we're happening. So yeah, thank you. Oh, and let me just disable that because that could get in the way. Okay, yeah, so we've got the Dooza. Well, we've got the Dooza dude. We have Vegetable Asbestos. Interesting name, man. Cool. He's servant. Tony um, Erkin. Welcome. Nice to see you again. Always good to see you. Um, yeah, we've got Bob Fisher. Okay, so tonight my plan is to go for one hour. Eva, Eva, welcome. Thank you. Good to see you here. Right, so my plan is to go for one hour this evening. Um, this, this Once I finish all the slides, I'm nearly done with them. This should be about 75 to 80 slides. I expect there'll be two, maybe three shows. Um, the aim is to be very thorough and very specific. I'm not going to try to cover everything because I will do multiple different presentations on Hitler and the Nazis. This one is to look at Hitler's views on Christianity. So I'm not necessarily going to be discussing what he says about Islam or other topics. Do understand that. We're going to be looking definitively, I hope, at what Hitler says about Christianity. All right. Of course, for, for more interesting information on this, I you can also look at Tick History, which did an interesting two-part episode on Hitler's Gnostic um, leanings, right, on their religious Gnostic views in Nazism. And of course, the day after I discussed uh, Hitler's Gnostic leanings, the very next day he released a video that talked about exactly that topic. All right. So welcome Kejina Hamilton, we've got Dragon, welcome, great to see you. XYZ, welcome, False Doctrines, welcome, George K, Lepanto, excellent. Okay, guys, <clears throat> let's just dive into this. Okay, so I'm going to drop into the chat now, again, my full research archive link, right, so you guys can go access my archive that is here, and I do recommend, please, that you, let me get my mouse pointer up. So if you go to the Nazism folder here, you're going to find most of the material that I'm using here today. All right, so that is all available here. Okay, so most of what I'm using is inside my Nazism folder. It's very, very detailed, and you can find just about everything here. I also want to mention I'm going to drop this in the chat now as well. This is a link to my OneNote database. You can find extensive material here. Many of the details, many of the information, much of the information that I used in previous uh, presentations, because people do ask me, it's available here. For instance, this is a summary of the Crusades, right? This is a much more detailed um, discussion of the Crusades. You can see it's quite long. If I go on the right-hand side, you can see this is a very detailed, lengthy discussion. I've used this in previous talks. This is a jihad timeline of numerous jihad attacks that happened against Christ Christendom, right? So people do ask me for this. Please go to those links, use the material. All right. Ah, this is not something we're going to discuss today, but I will be doing a talk on this in the in the future. This one is called Luther and Hitler: A Linear Connection Between Martin Luther and Adolf Hitler's Antisemitism with a Nationalistic Foundation. Today, we're not going to talk about the religious anti-Judaism that was present. We're going to talk about the racial, right? And then, of course, we need to also. This is something you would also find in my notes: the Nazi Aryanization of Christianity. This might be useful as well. And we will learn why as we go. Right. <clears throat> okay, so let me get this going. Okay, I will try to keep an eye on the chat, obviously, to see uh, who's been saying what. So do forgive me if I do miss the occasional thing. But um, with all the housekeeping out of the way... Um, yeah, obviously, I do tend to see the super chats. It actually is easy to see those because they pop up separately. All right, but guys, right, let's begin. So the question is, was Hitler a religious Christian? We're going to look at historical data, and we're going to compare that to the typical atheist and Islamic propaganda. Right, we all know how atheist Muslims try to imply that Hitler, Stalin, Marx, and so on were all devout Christians, and apparently they were acting out of Christian virtue. That's what made them so violent. We're going to be having a look at this to see how accurate these claims are. 
So Hitler says in various quotes, now I know Hitler does state, I am a Christian, I'm a Catholic, he does say this and people do use these quotes. We're going to be looking at the context of all of that. Hitler's views on Christianity. I shall never come personally to terms with the Christian lie. The reason why the ancient world was so pure, light and serene was that it knew nothing of the two great scourges, the pox and Christianity. Christianity is a prototype of Bolshevism, the mobilization by the Jew of the masses of slaves with, with the object of undermining society. Pure Christianity, the Christianity of the catacombs, is concerned with translating the Christian doctrine into facts. It leads, quite simply, to the annihilation of mankind. It is merely wholehearted Bolshevism under a tinsel of metaphysics. When he speaks of the Christianity of the catacombs, this is Christianity when it was persecuted under the Romans. Leave the hair splitting to others, whether it is the Old Testament or the New, or simply the sayings of Jesus, it's all the same Jewish swindle. It will not make us free. A German church, a German Christianity, is a distortion. One is either a German or a Christian. You cannot be both. Martin Bormann says in conversation with Hitler, so he's responding to a comment that Hitler has made, any doctrine which is anti-Christian must ipso facto be anti-Jewish as well. The National Socialist doctrine is therefore anti-Jewish in excelsis, for it is both anti-communist and anti-Christian. It was then that the future St. Paul distorted with diabolical cunning the Christian idea. The religion fabricated by Paul of Tarsus, which was later called Christianity, is nothing but the communism of today. He then says it is inconceivable that an educated priest should really believe all the nonsense that the church pours out. So I'm leading in with a handful of quotes by Hitler taken from various sources. We're going to be looking at his own written sources as well from Mein Kampf. We're going to be looking at other sources, at historical sources, and also, of course, the diaries of the people around him, the handwritten notes of the people around him, the letters of the people around him. And Joel Thomas, yes, that lame Paul theory again. Ask yourself, where did Hitler get that? Who, who started that idea in the 7th, in the 8th century? Which, let's see, it's a particular religion with a guy called, oh, good grief, he had a young wife, he had a six-year-old wife, good grief, I can never remember the name. Understand, where did Hitler get that idea? And really, there's only one place where he got that. <coughs> right. Uh, yes, Yaakov, all Gnostics, including Muslims, have a great hatred for St. Paul. <laughs> Vegetable asbestos, that's very funny. <laughs> okay, right, let's continue. Baphomet, yes, Paulus. Right, now we're going to mention clerical fascism. Christianity in its pure state stirred the population to revolt. Rome was Bolshevized, and Bolshevism produced exactly the same results in Rome as later in Russia. In other words, Christianity destroyed Rome just the way Bolshevism under Lenin destroyed Russia, according to Hitler. I can imagine people being enthusiastic about the paradise of Muhammad. But as for the insipid paradise of the Christians, Christianity is an invention of sick brains. One could imagine nothing more senseless, nor any more indecent way of turning the idea of the Godhead into a mockery. A Negro with his tabus is crushingly superior to the human who seriously believes in transubstantiation. Uh, before people jump on the bandwagon, uh, Martin Luther believed in that. So, let's continue. Now, clerical fascism refers to a political ideology that seeks to bring the church into cooperation with the fascist movement. Now, fascism, for our purposes here, is the integration of, of politics and state, government and state as one entity. So, it's the merger of these two, private and public, so that the government controls everything. It involves individuals who, as both party members and individuals, take an active part in church life and seek to use the church to advance the goals of the fascist political movement. By this definition, Nazism had its clerical fascist wing. Now, the term does not and is not intended to describe the Nazi regime as a whole. We're specifically pointing at this context. They infiltrated, subverted, and used the church for their purposes. Now, this last quote comes from this totalitarian movements and political religions from Rutledge. 
and it's the Nazis' positive Christianity, a variety of clerical fascism by the historian Richard Stigman Gore. And we will be talking about positive Christianity quite a bit. It's not far right wing. Far right wing means you are, you become, uh, what's the word? Uh, there's a term for that. So when, when you're leftist, you are communist. When you're far right, you just want to be left the heck alone. Hitler was not a fan. Hitler says all propaganda has to be popular and has to accommodate itself to the comprehension of the least intelligent of those whom it seeks to reach. That's why we can say that Abdul propaganda is so stupid. It has to be suited for the lowest common denominator. Even the lowest operator on the rung of the ladder has to be able to understand this and spout it out. Right? By the skillful and sustained use of propaganda, one can make a people see even heaven as hell or an extremely wretched life as paradise. Hitler believed Christianity was a tool used by the Jews to destroy nations. Far left means communism. Far left means you are communal. It's communism. Um, far right is, uh, that's a different, that's on the spectrum where you just want to be left alone. Um, there's a term for that. It's, it'll come to me. Christianity in its Bolshevistic form destroyed art and civilization. Christianity invented class warfare requiring anti-Jewish measures. Made for Alonzo, yes, the doza. Christianity was the first creed in the world to exterminate its adversaries in the name of love. Christianity's main theme is intolerance. Bolshevism was, Christian, was Christianity's illegitimate child, both being inventions of the Jew. The deliberate lie in the matter of religion was introduced into the world by Christianity. <laughs> Thank you, Nicodemus Herpico. Uh, what kind of tangents are the streamers on this for? All right. Um, far right wing are conservative. The far left has shifted so they will arrive on the shores of China soon. That is true. Okay. Hitler believed Christ was an Aryan and St. Paul used his doctrine to mobilize the criminal underworld and thus organize a proto-Bolshevism. Right. These are all statements that are derived from what Luther has said. Now, we're going to be using um, different, well, different variants of this particular Hitler's table talk from 1941 to 1944. It's interesting, it's interesting to note that Martin Luther also left behind table talks. This is the new edition, the only complete record of Hitler's private thoughts and plans with additional documents and materials. Now, the table talks. The authenticity of the table talks, also known as the hitler Bormann monologues, is debated amongst historians. A series of informal conversations between Adolf Hitler and his inner circle that took place between 1941 and 1944, recorded by Heinrich Heim, the stenographer, and later edited by Martin Bormann, Hitler's private secretary. It is believed that Bormann made edits and alterations to the transcripts to portray Hitler in a more positive light. You will find that these table talks are highly negative of Hitler. So him trying to make them even more positive and the fact that they are already so incredibly negative means what he said must have been much worse, right? So he removed sensitive or controversial topics, for instance, the Holocaust. Now, some argue that the German version must be treated with caution and that the English translation based on earlier transcripts is more reliable. Others argue the exact opposite. So understand now, atheists are going to come along and they're going to say, well, the table talks have been proven to be completely fallacious and therefore they're totally fake and therefore not a single word in them is true and therefore they can't be used because whatever, nonsense. That claim is derived from Richard Carrier. So because efforts are made by atheists, especially to discredit the English version due to work done by Richard Carrier. Now, this is a, it's a long story. The short version is this. Richard Carrier showed that four of 42 specific citations were apparently mistranslated, right? So he showed that, now there's not just 42 citations in the, in, the, in the entire book, it's hundreds of pages, but of 42 specific citations that they, that they examined, four of them proved to be false, and therefore the whole book is false. Understand? Right, let's continue. <laughs> right, now, atheists peddle in propaganda. The intention is to examine history in detail to see if the atheist and Muslim claim that Hitler was a Christian is true with any factual validity. The claim is propaganda. This is meant to imply that Hitler was acting from Christian doctrine and thus discredit the faith. 
This talk should demonstrate that the atheist evangelists, apologists, propagandists, some of you want to call them, and the Muslim dawah propaganda practitioners are lazy, generally ignorant, easily led, gullible, stupid, and malicious. Jesus, Christianity, and the Bible were shaped by the political and ideological needs of Nazi Germany, as we will see. And Einstein here would not be impressed with these atheists. <clears throat> I'm sorry about my old English accent. I really apologize for that. I'll work on that. Okay, so let's talk about Nazis' positive Christianity. Uh, by the way, I, there aren't 125 slides for anyone else who's checking. There's 70 slides, so I just forgot to change that number. Hitler and the Nazis sought to replace traditional Christianity with positive Christianity, what they called a positive Christianity. They attacked the church in Germany by attempting to bring it under state control, persecuting Christian leaders who opposed their regime. Priests were often influential leaders in their community, and so they were sought out by the Nazis. Thousands of priests were forced into concentration camps. Most were made to die slowly of starvation or disease. A special barracks was set up at Dachau, the camp near Munich, Germany, for clergymen. The, the Nazi idea of positive Christianity basically was designed as propaganda to allay fears of Germany's Christian majority by implying that the Nazi movement was not anti-Christian. Hans Kell, Nazi minister for church affairs in 1937, confirmed Nazi hostility to the Catholic and Protestant creeds in an address during an intense phase of the Nazi Kirchenkampf. Kirchenkampf would be the fight against the church. And this is him here. The party stands on the basis of positive Christianity. And positive Christianity is National Socialism. National Socialism is doing God's will. Uh, short version, these people literally saw themselves as Christians. Christianity was not National Socialism. National Socialism was Christianity. What do Muslims tell us? We are the real Christians. Well, the Nazis were saying, we are the real Christians. God's will reveals itself in German blood. Dr. Zollner and Catholic Bishop of Münster, Count Gallen, have tried to make clear to me that Christianity consists in faith in Christ as the Son of God. That makes me laugh. No, Christianity is not dependent on the Apostles' Creed. True Christianity is represented by the Nazi party, and the German people are now called by the party, and especially the Führer, to a real Christianity. The Führer is the herald of a new revelation. Don't forget, Hitler says, but Christianity is an invention of sick brains. One could imagine nothing more senseless, nor any more indecent way of turning the idea of the Godhead into a mockery. Now, this is from Ibn Qayyim, and I've discussed his book on my channel before. Just look up Ibn Qayyim, right? Q-A-Y-Y-I-M. The prayer of the Nazarenes ridicules the worshipped deity, so the prayer of the Christians ridicules God. The Christians chose a way of prayer during which the most devoted and ascetic among them would consider it no great matter if he happens to have passed urine dripping on his thighs and legs. Understand, this was a common trope that Christianity ridiculed God. And of course here, you've got the Nazis telling us that Christians ridiculed God. Again, a Nazi parallel. Hitler was made victorious through terror. Now, this is from Mein Kampf, the official 1939 edition. It's in the folder that I directed you to earlier. A philosophy of life, which is inspired by an infernal spirit of intolerance, can only be set aside by a doctrine that is advanced in an equally ardent spirit and fought for with as determined a will, and which is itself a new idea, pure and absolutely true. This philosophy of life, which is inspired by a spirit of intolerance, is Christianity that he's referring to here. This is literally from the Islamic series. Didn't they say the exact same thing? They're very close. Yes, Kush, XD. You were about to say that Adolf sounded like a Muslim in that quote. Correct. That's Ibn Qayyim. And in fact, it also sounds like um, uh, Ibn Taymiyyah, who says the very same, basically the same thing. Um, Muslims have also sourced this. Says, that was a Muslim source to say that Christians urinate in church. Yeah, I've read that on air before. So... He says here, each one of us today may regret the fact that the advent of Christianity was the first occasion on which spiritual terror 
was introduced into the much freer ancient world. But the fact cannot be denied that ever since then the world is pervaded and dominated by this kind of coercion. That violence is broken only by violence and terror by terror. So he's saying that Christianity brought violence, coercion, and terror into the world. And the only way to fight violence is with violence. The only way to fight terror is with terror. He is going to use violence and terror against the Christian church because the Christian church is violent. These are the words of Mr. Adolf Hitler. Now, Hitler's public presentations of positive Christianity differed. Despite proclaiming a unified peace with Christian churches, positive Christianity advocates sought to distance themselves from the Jewish origins of Christ and the Bible, to align them with Nazi anti-Semitism. So, Jesus and the Bible both had to be made to align with Nazi party ideology, which was anti-Semitic. Positive Christianity separated from Nicene Christianity and is thus considered apostate by Trinitarian Christian churches, regardless of whether they are Catholic, Eastern Orthodox, or Protestant. Hitler consistently self-identified as a Christian. He made the claim he was Christian over and over, even Catholic, and even on occasion as a Catholic, specifically throughout his entire political career, despite criticizing biblical figures. He identified as a Christian, for instance, in one example, in a 12 April 1922 speech. Hitler identified as a Christian in Mein Kampf, uh, just as a brief aside, if you go to the folder that I mentioned earlier, all of Hitler's speeches are here. Um, you're going to find... Mm, okay, can't find them, but all of Hitler's speeches you will find here. Okay, you're going to find all of Hitler's speeches in this folder. So you're going to find several different versions of these speeches. Uh, I may not have updated it, but by tonight, once the update happens, you will find that all of Hitler's speeches are there for your ability to peruse. Hello, everyone. Hello, Marlene. Welcome, Marion Grand Bruheim. So, now, he self-identifies as a Christian, and in this speech in 1922, Hitler identifies as a Christian in Mein Kampf. However, historians, including Ian Kershaw and Lawrence Rees, amongst others, characterize his acceptance of the term positive Christianity and his political involvement in religious policy as being driven by opportunism and a pragmatic recognition of the political importance of the Christian churches in Germany. Germany was a majority Christian country. He had to appeal, and he explains it in Mein Kampf. He actually explains in Mein Kampf, it is important not to offend and fight against the church. And he mentions an example of a politician who did this, and he lost completely, lost everything. He had to leave politics. So he says it's important that we don't do this. We need to be smart when dealing with the church. Right. If you guys like what I'm doing, please share it. Right. Please hit the like button. I'd appreciate that. Uh, let me see how many people are here today. Oh, great. Okay. Right. Now, positive Christianity. Also, the guy that we're looking at here, <clears throat> this is Nazi ideologist. Right. Um, this is a book called The Political and Social Thought of Alfred Rosenberg. A very important man within Nazi circles. We're going to be learning a lot about him as well. Don K. Welcome, Don K. And Gabe Salazar. Distancing the Christians from the Jews. Nothing to do with Luther. Actually, a lot to do with Luther, Gabe. A lot to do with Luther. Unfortunately, yeah. Martin Luther, Martin Luther features heavily. Heavily here. Sadly. But I'm not going to be discussing Luther at any length today. I'll be doing very minor views of Luther. But at some point, I will be discussing Luther and the Nazis. And... They go hand in glove, sadly. You have no idea how bad it was with Luther. So, now, they are worshipping what they call positive Christianity, not negative Christianity. If you're wondering what negative Christianity is, it's what you believe, right? So, positive Christianity was a very vague plank of the original 25-point program of the NSDAP, that's the Nazis, right? Positive Christianity was an attempt to create a new state religion by uniting Protestant sects into a single church. Notice he didn't say Catholic. <laughs> its doctrine proclaimed that Christ was an Arian. It downplayed or eliminated the Old Testament because the Old Testament is too Jewish. In fact, the Old Testament had to be removed completely. So, it attempted to shoehorn themes of a struggle between the Arians and the Jews into the New Testament. They created their own New Testament, the Nazis, with their, and sadly, 
Protestant theologians that they hired, who was who was sympathetic to the Nazi regime, they wrote their own version of the New Testament. Its ideas were never clearly elucidated. It never caught on in any significant fashion. But the term positive Christianity originally indicated a secular and a non-denominational but vaguely pro-Christian attitude on the part of the Nazis, which is which to me is disturbing because so many Christians claim to be non-denominational. Well, the Nazis had a non-denominational Christianity too. I would rather not be associated with something of that nature. Pick a side. Get off the fence. Right? Hitler as Messiah and his new religion. So, efforts to impose a Nazified positive Christianity on a state-controlled German evangelical church failed, fortunately. This failure resulted in the formation of the dissident confessing church, which saw great danger, danger to Germany from the new religion. They call it a new religion. The Catholic Church denounced the creed's blood and soil ideology in the 1937 papal encyclical Mit Brennende Sorge with great with burning anxiety. Hitler privately assured General Gerd Engel. Now, it should be noted that the at that time the the military leading class, the ruling class within the military, were generally very conservative and generally very religious. So he privately assured General Gerd Engel in 1941 that I am now as before a Catholic and will always remain so. The official Nazi ideologist Alfred Rosenberg played an important role in the development of positive Christianity, which he conceived in opposition to the Catholic Church and also to the Protestant churches, and these doctrines he called negative Christianity. His servant, yeah, non-denominational, spineless, or too flexible. Yeah, it, it's a concern. We, you need to pick a side. You need to choose what you believe in. So, not, so Hitler is known for his rejection of and hatred for Christianity, as is Alfred Rosenberg. Mit brennende Sorge, uh, with burning anxiety. So briefly on this. This is written in German, specifically for the Germans. Typically, such a papal encyclical is written in Latin. It was written by Pope Pius XI to the German bishops in 1937, expressing his concerns about the Nazi regime's treatment of the Catholic Church in Germany. It emphasizes the importance of upholding religious duty and education, defending the truth and maintaining faith in God during times of persecution, because these were times of, of church persecution. Just realize the positive and negative dynamic screams dialectics. That's from Jordan Schmidt. And that's actually a very good point. Yes, I, I've mentioned and I do touch on in this in this talk on the Gnostic aspects of their belief. They are certainly Gnostics. Yes, but that is true. You've got this positive and negative. You do have the Gnostic dynamic. Right. So he urges the faithful to show heroism and be generous in suffering, to face the oppressors of the church with the strength of their faith and charity. He also emphasizes that every true and lasting reform has ultimately sprung from the sanctity of men who were driven by the love of God and of men. The Pope stresses that faith in the church cannot stand pure and true without the support of faith in the primacy of the Bishop of Rome. He also sends words of gratitude and commendation to those who suffer persecution and to all those imprisoned in jail and in concentration camps. Finally, he addresses Catholic parents, urging them to sever their responsibilities from the opposite camp and free their conscience from guilty cooperation with such corruption. The Nazis raided and confiscated the letter. Um, his servant, yeah, look, no, Hitler was against Protestant Christianity. However, he found a certain, shall we say, allyship within Protestant Christianity. There was, there was a certain overlap and a certain sympathy. So, sadly, um, actually, let me see if I can find something before I... Actually, yeah, we're going to get there in a moment. So, so let me just continue and I will get there. So the claim is, but they, the Catholic Church collaborated. Now, if someone puts a gun to your head or someone holds your, your family hostage and they say, but you collaborated, were you willingly collaborating? Were you trying to find a nonviolent solution because you did not have the power? You've got 100 men with guns pointing them at your head. How much power do you have? How much negotiating power do you have? You have to go along with it. Um, Stalin once said, you know, there's the whole claim that that someone mentioned to Stalin about Jesus Christ and the power of God. And then Stalin apparently said to this person, how many divisions does Jesus have? Because the church, oddly enough, in 1937, didn't have an army and couldn't send an army into Germany to fight against Hitler. 
So, but they collaborated. In 1933, the Catholic Church signed a concordat, a pact, with the Reich government in Germany to secure the freedom of the church's mission and protect the faithful from potential trials and difficulties. However, the Nazis repeatedly violated the agreement, revealing the true intentions of a war of extermination against Jews, Christians, and other groups. Despite the church's efforts to warn Germany's rulers of the consequences of supporting such policies, the Nazis disregarded the Concordat. The church remained committed to defending violated rights and opposing policies that sought to strangle rights guaranteed by the treaty. However, it was mindful of potential consequences of taking drastic action, of offending Hitler to the point where Hitler took drastic action and started slaughtering people in even greater numbers. They sought to avoid any actions that would bring harm to the faithful. They are caught in a very tough position. If they say too much, if they do too much, they are not in a position to defend the lives of millions of Christians who, whose lives are now at risk. Many have accused the Catholic Church of collaborating with the Nazis during this time, but this claim is false. The Church did not support the Nazis' policies and actively worked to defend the rights of the faithful and oppose the Nazis' actions. In fact, they worked subversively where they could. But the history of this story is much more complex than presented with mostly speculation over fact. I would recommend you have a look here, Hitler and the Vatican. Inside the secret archives that reveal the new story of the Nazis and the Church. This is a very complex story. There's a lot more going on here. The church had very little power. The church was also, shall we say, disorganized. The church didn't know what to do. On top of that, the church was going to condemn them and call them heretics, apostates, and seriously condemn the Nazis. But they got played, as it seems, it, it would seem that they got played by Mussolini. So Mussolini made overtures to the church and said, look, blah, blah, blah. Let me try and help you guys out. And they got played by Mussolini. And by the time that the church realized this, it was too late. Now, let's speak of Luther, Marcion, and the Protestants. Now, the most famous of the liberal Protestant scholars in Germany in the 20th century was a man called Adolf Harnack. He lived from 1851 to 1930. In his book, What is Christianity?, published in 1900, Harnack portrayed Jesus as a historical figure who taught ethical principles. In other words, he was just a good teacher, right? And he emphasized the importance of love and compassion, because love is love and we must have compassion. Those are liberal values being used in the LGBT, LGBTQFU plus community today. Understand that, right? So this is where Christianity got watered down by this liberal Protestant theologian. Harnack rejected the supernatural aspects of Jesus's life, such as his miracles and his divinity. He focused on his moral teachings. He believed that Jesus was a human being who was deeply influenced by the Jewish prophets and believed that Jesus saw himself as a reformer of Judaism. Hardnack's portrayal of Jesus was criticized as a departure from traditional Christian beliefs, of course. His ideas had a significant influence on the development of liberal theology in the 20th century. Now, he advocated stripping the Old Testament from the Bible before anyone had even heard of National Socialism. But these ideas would have been prevalent at the time and it would have made their way into the Nazi thinking. As the First World War was nearing its close, he attempted to resuscitate the second century heretic Marcion. Marcion had taught that the God of love in the New Testament had no connection to the imperfect God of the Old Testament. So understand you're looking at, you're looking at Hitler pushing a heresy that goes back to Marcion which has been recently resurrected by this 20th century theologian, this Protestant theologian. So, the God of the Old Testament bears no relation to the God of the New Testament. And the, the, the God of the Old Testament is imperfect. And that Christianity and Judaism had to be totally separated. As Jewish carnal law, Hardnack maintained that the Old Testament as a unity lies below the level of Christianity. So in other words, the New Testament is superior to, and the Old Testament is inferior. It is below the, the goodness of the New Testament. So now you must also note that the very same idea had come out of Martin Luther, that there was a, a certain ranking in the, in the superiority of various of the Gospels and the books of the Bible. You had the good books, and then you had like, you know, so in other words, according to Christian doctrine, the doctrine is good. The doctrine is good for for learning. The doctrine is good to well, for preaching and so on. It's all it's all doctrine. It's all God breathed. Martin Luther said, "Well, you know, these books the, these are the A grade, and these are like the C grade, and these are like yeah, trash can with those, 
understand. So this idea, again, comes out of the whole idea of Martin Luther. So regarding Luther not removing, and he says here, regarding Martin Luther not removing the Old Testament from Protestantism, what an unburdening of Christianity and its doctrine it would have been if Luther had taken this step. But nonetheless, the latter's emphasis on gospel over law meant that Luther's concept of faith is actually the one that stands nearest to the Marcionite concept. This theologian is identifying that Martin Luther's ideas are actually in line with Marcionite heresy, oddly enough. Right, let me see, just catch up with the comments. Um, okay, at least. so guys, let's not have a big fight in the, in the chat right now. All right. Um, let's see. Okay, let's continue. Now, you should be aware of this. This is Protestant support for the Nazis. This is the percentage of Nazi votes in 1932. This here, okay, these are the Nazi votes. The white areas basically didn't vote for Hitler. Notice that when you look at these white areas and you superimpose them like this here, those were the Catholics. The Catholics overwhelmingly did not vote for the Nazis. Hitler had a special view of the of the Catholics. In fact, in many places, in many cases, Catholics were forbidden from joining the Nazi party. He thought that the Catholics would not go along with the program. The Protestants, sadly, went along with the program. All right. So let me see if I've missed anything. Yep. Right. Now, so who was Alfred Rosenberg? Let's look at Alfred Rosenberg, him being a Gnostic. Nazi ideologist Alfred Rosenberg is overlooked among leaders in the Third Reich. He was born to mercantile parents in the Baltic region of the Russian Empire. He was a student in Russia during the Bolshevik Revolution. He was deeply influenced by the anti-Semitic forgery, the Protocols of the Elders of Zion, which was propaganda distributed by the Tsar's secret police. He took it to Germany, where he introduced it to Adolf Hitler. Rosenberg leaned heavily on heterodox writings that challenged Christianity. He revived interest in a variety of philosophies and heresies, and individuals long forgotten, such as the cosmic dualistic Gnostic Cathars. So he introduces the Cathars, and the mystic master Eckhart von Hockheim. Rosenberg viewed history from a perspective called scientific racism. <laughs> it just makes me think of scientific atheism where the history of humankind had been marked by a struggle between the Aryan race and their supposed inferiors. So, of course, the Aryans, the Germans, are the superior race because they are Aryans, and, of course, everyone else is inferior. And because in line with, um, with social Darwinism, the weak eat and destroy, uh, are eaten and destroyed by the strong. Right, let me continue. Um, what am I talking about? I'm talking about... Um, Hitler's views on Christianity. Was Hitler a Christian? Uh, just so you know. That's conociendo el Islam. Right. Let me see. Um, have I missed anything? Let me continue. Now, race was the newest subject for the application of cosmic dualism. Right? This is a Gnostic dialectic. And someone mentioned Gnostic dialectic earlier. So, yes, race was now where the Gnostic dialectic was being applied. So, Rosenberg identifies the Nazis' task as creating a bulwark against any Jewish influences from Europe, generally, and Germany in particular, and by any means necessary. Now, the Cathar heresy was a religious movement that emerged in the 12th century in the Languedoc region of France. The Cathars believed in a dualistic worldview. They were, they were Gnostics, which held that there were two opposing forces in the universe, a good spiritual force associated with God and a bad material force associated with Satan. Didn't we speak earlier of the positive Christianity and negative Christianity, Satan versus God? Yeah. So understand the connection here. This was a form of Gnosticism. They rejected the authority of the Catholic Church and its sacraments, including the Eucharist, baptism, and confession. The Cathars also rejected the idea of the Trinity and the divinity of Jesus, considering him to be a purely spiritual being. They believed in reincarnation, and they rejected the idea of a physical resurrection. So, that's a little bit about the Cathars. Now, Rosenberg also believed in Meister Eckhart, who was a heretic. Now, Rosenberg figured in a long anti-Jewish tradition in Germany. 
It was a, it's a tortured legacy that began with Martin Luther and continued through many of the prominent German figures of the 19th century. In fact, uh, let me go here just so that we are aware. I'm going to be brief for this. This is Martin Luther. So this is, um, I will be talking about this, but this is Martin Luther. These, these are woodcuts derived from Martin Luther's works. Martin Luther at no time spoke out against this. This was propaganda that Martin Luther allowed, tolerated, encouraged against the Pope as well, against the Catholics as well, right? So this was Martin Luther saying that these are the Jews sucking from the, you know, of a pig, right? This again, and this is a, this is a Jew inspecting the pig's, um, well, you, you can think about what he might be planning to do with the pig here, right? And then, of course, you've got this here. This is, again, this is part of Martin Luther's legacy. This is a pig goggle at a church in Germany. So they were going to destroy it because of its nature. But, but yeah, this is what Luther, so this is a guy getting off with the pig and a pig getting off with the guy. Do you understand? This is Luther's mind. Right? For instance, Luther wrote the book on the Jews and their lies. And every anti-Jewish book printed in Hitler's Third Reich contained references to and quotations from Luther. Why? Because Luther slotted in with the Nazis' policies perfectly. Luther gave them incredible ammunition. For instance, Martin Luther writes, First, set fire to their synagogues or schools and bury and cover with dirt whatever will not burn. This is to be done in the honor of our Lord and of Christendom. So in the honor of Jesus burn and destroy the possessions of the Jews so that God might see that we are Christians. So unless you hate Jews, you're not a Christian. Second, I advise that their houses be burned and destroyed. For Jesus, of course, right? And then, of course, let's listen. One day I will do a talk on this. I'm busy preparing on this one. Um, Luther's friends and his foes criticized him for proposing these measures. But he went on and he says here, Jews were dogs. We are at fault for not slaying them, he said shortly before his death. We are at fault, Luther is saying, as Christians, for not killing the Jews. Do you understand? Now, the Nazis claim that they are the true Christians. They are going to kill the Jews. Why? Because Martin Luther said so, right? They're doing it for Jesus. Do you understand how filthy the man Martin Luther is? Why I think he's a disgusting pig. Understand, so please don't try and convince me Martin Luther was a nice man. The man was a disgusting, vile pig of a human being. All right, <clears throat> let's continue. Trevor Abrams, welcome, Trevor. Hey, good to see you. So, yeah, now Meister Eckhart's anti oh, sorry, no, um. Rosenberg's the, the anti-Christian, the myth of the 20th century, was his magnum opus, this book that he wrote, which was his, his contribution to, to literature on his views on the world and how, you know, ideology, because he was an ideologist, and this is how he was going to run the world. Okay. And Meister Eckhart was accused of heresy and brought up before the local Franciscan-led Inquisition, tried as a heretic by Pope John XII, but seems to have died before the verdict was received, so before they could pass down the final verdict. He had died, so therefore he didn't officially die as a heretic. But his mystical ideas have led to influence with very, very many people, and these ideas also made their way into the Nazis' ideology. All right. The Neoplatonism of Pseudo-Dionysus, the Areopagite, asserted a great influence on him. Now, that made no sense to you. Yeah, it doesn't make any sense to me, but understand, Pseudo-Dionysus, Greek god, right? And what are Christians doing associating pagan ideas into their religion? Martin Luther was a complete disgrace, okay? Now, as reflecting these notions on the Gottheit beyond the God who can be named. Now, this is Meister Eckhart talking about the Gottheit. The, this is the, the nature of God or the God beyond the God. The idea of the God beyond the God is a Gnostic idea. It is an entirely Gnostic idea, a God beyond the God. So there's the God you know, the inferior God, Yahweh, and above them, above him, the creator God, who is a dirty, evil God, is the true God. Understand, so this guy was dabbling in Gnosticism. He was no longer preaching Christianity. 
Now, philosopher Carl Albert had argued that Eckhart should be placed in the tradition of philosophical mysticism of Parmenides, Plato, Plotinus, and Porphyry. Porphyry hated Christianity. Plotinus was his master. Porphyry was the student of Plotinus. Plotinus created a concept of God called the One. The One is identical. For all intents and purposes, it is Allah. For all intents and purposes, Plotinus, this, this Gnostic, Neoplatonic thinker, philosopher, his idea of the One, of the Gnostic God called the One, the Monad, is effectively Allah. And also with Proclus and other Neoplatonic thinkers. Schopenhauer stated, Buddha, Eckhart and I all teach essentially the same. Schopenhauer was very anti-Christian. Now, for an anti-Christian philosopher to be claiming that Eckhart teaches the same as Buddha, Buddhism in this sense is effectively Gnostic, and Schopenhauer was anti-Christian, then he's in very bad company for a Christian. Understand? But these ideas made their way into Nazi thinking. So they are taking from heresy. Accordingly, the so-called Old Testament must be abolished once and for all as a book of religion. By this, the unsuccessful attempt of the last one and a half thousand years to make us spiritually into Jews will be eliminated. This is an attempt for which we are, among other things, had to thank our terrible materialistic Jewish rulers. The movement is to be strengthened further by the removal of open, distorted, and superstitious reports from the New Testament. Let's edit the New Testament. There's someone else who wanted to edit the New Testament. His name was Luther, Martin, Martin, Martin Luther wanted to edit the New Testament too, oddly enough, and he did. The necessary fifth gospel cannot naturally be added by a synod. It will be the creation of a man who experiences the longing for purification very deeply. Oh, they were purifying the gospel. Don't worry, they're just fortifying the election. They were purifying the gospel. He probably will have studied the theology of the New Testament. Our Pauline churches are therefore not Christian. So, Pauline Christianity is not Christianity at all. They are the product of the Jewish Syrian leanings of the apostles. The ideas were introduced by the Jerusalem author of the Matthew Gospel. So, he's relying on, shall we say, Christian mythicism and other ideas by, by in this case, you're looking at um, Bruno Bauer and others who claimed that, that other people wrote the Gospels. But later, Paul completed the subversion of Christianity independently of Mark. So understand, Hitler is here spouting Islamic propaganda. He's spouting Marxist, Bruno Bauer-style propaganda against Christianity. All right, let me pause for a moment and see that I haven't missed anything in the chat. Um, yeah, again, please do like and share. Do subscribe. And yeah, um, I hope you guys will also consider subscribing and also letting your friends know. And also, if you'd like to donate, to the channel that would be appreciated um i do put a great deal of time and effort into this part two of this will be on thursday evening i will do this on thursday on wednesday i'll be on with sam shamoon um doing my next show on atheism on the historical roots of atheism okay let's continue let me see if i missed anything um okay so yeah okay i don't know if i've missed anything um uh, Tom Yokai. Um, no, no, who was that that said, um, ah, Stewards Impact Church? You're most welcome. Thank you. <clears throat> okay, let me continue. Right now, do these words sound like these are Christians talking? Right? Does this sound like these are Christians talking, like these are true believers talking? Right? So, there is no proof for the often made claim that Jesus was a Jew. Now, remember, these are the words of the Nazi party, these are the words of Martin Luther. Sorry. I keep, when I think Hitler, I think Martin Luther. When I think Martin Luther, I think Hitler. The names are just so mixed and merged in my head already. These are the words of, this This is an amalgamation, effectively, of the overall opinion of the Nazi party. These are the words of Hitler. These are the words of his closest advisors. This is their official propaganda. right? So, there is no proof that Jesus was a Jew. In fact, there is much to show the contrary. Jesus was possibly an Aryan. Rosenberg insisted that there was not one shred of historical evidence that Jesus was Jewish or that his true message had come down to us. So in other words, we don't know what Jesus really taught, right? All else is the magical production of the same Jewish Middle Eastern Babylonian theology that subverted Rome and controlled the Hebrew masses. So the people who talk about the Babylonian Christian church, well, he got that from Martin Luther. And everyone is now repeating what Hitler repeated, right? So if Martin Luther is coming out of the mouth of Hitler, 
and it's working for Hitler, then maybe you want to think twice about your sources and what you're saying. Right? Now, I'll continue. Such was the Pauline falsification of the great figure of Christ. So they are talking constantly about the New Testament being falsified, fabricated. Jesus did not exist. Jesus did exist. Jesus was not a Jew. Jesus was maybe a Jew, but 1%. Jesus was an Aryan. Jesus was never a Jew. And yeah, this is their theology. Understand? So let me continue. Um, Thomas, okay, Kushex D. Okay, guys, I'm going to start timing you out if I see more of this discussion. Focus on the content. If I see more bad history coming out of your mouths, I'm going to get very upset and annoyed with this because I spent too many hours having to read rather than spending time doing things that are fun. Okay, you said here, Hitler taught that Jews, Jesus was born of a Roman soldier. He gets this from Jewish sources. That is a Roman source. The Romans hated the Christians. The Romans made up that story. The Jews happened to include it in their propaganda. Now, I do want to remind you, the church was murdering Jews, okay? We just saw here that Martin Luther recommended exterminating the Jews, okay? That's the Protestant side. The Catholic Church also murdered Jews. The church was wrong. Now, I'd say Jews have a slight little bit of reason to be upset about that, because if people want to murder you, maybe you don't like it. You might say a few things that might upset you. Don't go back and say, well, the Jews said something bad, we should kill them all. No, they were being hunted down and killed. I think they are justified in being a fraction upset. Okay? But get your facts straight. Try and get your timeline in order. Wow. Arnold Nathaniel, thank you very much. I am very grateful. Thank you very, very much. Okay? So, it's strange that people can take the time to blame Jews. They cannot take the time to investigate the history correctly. Okay? Understand, if you are going to, if you are going to be pushing propaganda, we are not friends. I want to be very clear. If you are going to be pushing propaganda that is going to and has gotten people murdered, we are not friends. I want to be very clear about that. I spent too many years of my life in dangerous places trying to get people not killed as part of my job. Okay, If you're going to contribute to the deaths of people or to an ideology that seeks the death of people or promoting ideas that lead to the death of people, our relationship ends here. I ban you and we never talk again. I want to be very clear about that. Ideas have consequences. I've been to places where crappy ideas had very bad consequences. Paulus, wow, thank you very, very much. I'm really grateful. Thank you. Okay, so Rosenberg backed. Okay, so let me just continue, finish the sentence. I've got another five minutes. Rosenberg sympathized and identified with Talat Pasha and the Committee of Union and Progress that executed the Armenian Genocide claiming there was a deliberately Jewish policy which had always protected the Armenians. So now they're blaming the victims, basically. And that during the World War, the Armenians have led the espionage against the Turks, similar to the Jews against Germany. So they deserve to die. They deserve to die. That Understand, the Talat, these are Muslims. Now you've, got, now you've got the Nazis siding with the Turks and the Muslims. Rosenberg backed the neo-pagan German faith movement, which rejected the Judeo-Christian conception of God. So he backed a neo-pagan movement. Uh, Nicodemus Serpico says, I couldn't agree more with that sentiment, which is why I excuse no one, regardless of how mass media protects them for their fascism. Yeah, so I'll continue. Now, Rosenberg drafted a plan for the future of religion in Germany. Rosenberg was the chief ideologist, right? So he had to be obviously working very closely with, with Hitler to plan how they're going to get their message, their ideology across. And so he drafted a plan for the future religion in Germany, which would see a positive Christian Reich, influenced by Germanic paganism, conduct the expulsion of the foreign Christian religions, which would be Catholicism and Protestantism, the replacement of the Bible as the supreme religious authority with Mein Kampf. So he was going to replace the Bible. Okay, let me just go to my folder here. So, the Nazis were intending to replace the Bible with Mein Kampf. Understand the implications of that, that we're going to replace. Have any of you actually read Mein Kampf? Do me a favor, download it, spend five minutes reading any random pages. Just download it, take five minutes, just read any number of pages. Just jump around in the book. Tell me what you think of it. Seriously, just grab random pages. And thank you again, um, 
did I miss any super chats if I if there was any comment associated with that um, from Arnold? And he says, thank you, Arnold. Thank you, Lloyd, for your efforts in teaching all of us. No, thank you. I, I do appreciate the support. Um, I am really grateful. So, so they were going to replace the Bible with Mein Kampf as the holy scripture of positive Christianity. Do you understand this is not Christian? Atheists are idiots. Tell them I said that, please. Muslim propagandists are liars. You do not replace the Bible with Mein Kampf and say this is now the new Bible for this positive Christianity. And they wanted to replace the Christian cross with the swastika as the universal symbol of European Christianity in Nazified Christian churches. Now, Indians lose their mind over the swastika. And do me a favor, stop referring to the nasty swastika as that's an Indian symbol. For, that is not important. Trust me, it's, it's not even... Let me show you something. You guys are... That's a wonderful way to get them off the hook. Understand? You're doing them a favor by, by mis... By, by offering bad information. You've fallen for bad information. You can ignore the, the whole idea of the... Um, I want to show you something here. Uh, let me find this because it's going to be a little... Uh, here we go. I want you to have a look here. Do you see this is a this is a Norse symbol? This thing has been around everywhere. Every culture on Earth, South America, through to the North Pole, and probably Mars, has used this symbol. Understand, this is Thor, the god of thunder. This symbol is linked to Thor, the god of th thunder, and Thor's hammer. Understand, that's on his belt buckle. This symbol goes way back. You don't have to go anywhere near India because this is part of a Norse Aryan slash Nordic symbolism within Nazism. So understand, when they give you an idea, don't fall for the first idea. Stop. Think. Do some research. Don't be lazy, please. So I want to reiterate here. They were going to replace the Bible with Mein Kampf. They were going to replace Christianity with positive Christianity. They were going to replace the cross with the swastika. It's not the swastika, it's actually the Hakenkreuz, and there's another name as well, but it's the Hakenkreuz, right? So this is a different symbol. Now, this symbol's been around for a long time. Right, moving on. Positive Christianity and Jihadi Jesus. It's a good sign in India. So where's that pick from, Lloyd? Former Norse mythology, so I'm super intrigued by the Thor fresco. Um, uh, yeah, well, that's, just, that's, a, that's a presentation for a different day on a different topic, all right? Um, Marlene Stewart says, I agree with Lloyd. It has been completely co-opted the mind of the public. Don't even bother. Um, so metaphysical joker. I mean, that's a fair point. <clears throat> um, okay. So, yeah, Kush, um, look, do me a favor. Think before you speak. I, I want you to understand, if you are going to be spouting propaganda enemy propaganda, you and I are not friends, right? Understand, I'm, I really don't have time to be dealing with everyone, everything. I've, I've provided this information. I've spent the time, learn, please. But if, if, I was on a, if I was on a security detail and you were the guy that was distracted constantly with your girlfriend on the phone and on Tinder, when you should be looking out for the guy that's trying to kill your principal or take you out or me out to get to the principal, we would fire you right away. You would be off the team because you're a liability. You're not an asset. That is the perspective I look at this from. You are on the enemy side. You are spouting enemy doctrine. You are sympathetic to the enemy, whether you know it or not. That, sorry, I, I cannot have that. So let's finish on this slide, okay? So this is where I finish today. Positive Christianity and Jihadi Jesus. Positive Christianity had tactical objectives different to Nicene Christianity. A selective, a selective editing of the Bible, the Old and the New Testaments, to reject impurities invented by the Jews that could corrupt the Christian faith from the Jewish written parts of the Bible basically meant that the whole New Old Testament had to go. And the Old Testament had to be edited to remove Jewish references. Any Old Testament references had to be thrown out. Jesus' Arianhood and non-Jewishness made him a Nordic Amorite. Uh, we'll talk more about that. He promoted the political objective of national unity. Alexa, stop. To overcome confessional differences, to establish national Catholicism and eliminate all Catholicism functioning in Germany outside of the Nazi state. So Catholicism had to become a state-managed religion. 
just like Protestantism had to become a state-managed religion, right? And they wanted to unite Protestantism, Protestantism into a single, unitary, positive Christian state, nominally controlled directly by the German Messiah, Hitler himself. Remember, the Bible replaced by Mein Kampf, Jesus replaced by Hitler the Messiah, and the, the swastika replaces the cross. They encouraged followers to support the creation of an Aryan homeland for all Germanic-related peoples. In the Reich Protestant churches, the New Testament was altered. They removed the genealogies of Jesus that showed his Davidic descent. Jewish names and places were removed. Quotations from the Old Testament were removed unless they showed the Jews in a negative light. References to fulfilled Old Testament prophecies were removed, and Jesus was reworked into a militaristic, heroic figure fighting the Jews using Nazified language. Ah, Joel Thomas. Thank you for the lesson, Lord, and the time you take to teach us. I'm sorry if this annoys you, but this is... Is the Crowley Thelema video still in development? Uh, yeah, I'm still working on that. The thing is, I've got so many other, other presentations I need to finish. Like, I want to finish this. This one's going to be about 75... I've done 22 slides now. This one's about 75. I want this to be definitive and detailed, very academic, very scholarly. So, because... At some point, I want you guys to be able to, when people make the claim that, that Hitler was a Christian and the Nazis were Christians, I want to have a definitive resource that shows that this is absolutely false. These people are either misinformed or lying or both. And um, But yes, I will do the Nazi, I'm sorry, the Crowley Thelema video that I have all the notes together. I've got a ton of things. And so one by one, I'll be doing these. On Thursday, I will do part two of this. On Wednesday, I'm with Sam. Um, Conociendo. El Islam, thank you very much. He says, this is a little help for you, brother. I wish Spanish speakers and other people who speak other Romance languages can understand what you're saying. We need to learn this. So thank you very much for your hard work. No, thank you. I'm very grateful. Uh, if anyone wants to use this, translate this, by all means, please do. I will provide very shortly a um, English transcript for this. I will finish the English um, subtitles and upload those in a while. And um, Arnold Nathaniel says, I saw a good definition of Christian. Someone who has the presence of Christ, the priorities of Christ, and the power of Christ. That's really nice. Thank you. All right, so I'll do one more bonus slide. Let me finish here. Jesus was a fill-in-your-own-blank. Uh, Moore K, 1967, says, Lloyd, I know it might be off topic a bit, but I'm interested in knowing how much influence the Dreyfus Affair had on the Nazis. You know, I cannot remember. Um, I have read about it. It's been a while. I cannot answer you right now. I'd have to look into that if it's relevant. It's just that I'm trying to do so many different channels of research. Um, I've got to narrow it down somewhere. But I can look, if you drop it, comment in the later i can try and have a look into it <clears throat> final slide guys here's where i end jesus was a fill in your own blank all of these racial memories of a prehistoric nordic tradition in north africa so he's claiming this guy's claiming that that there are all these racial memories of a prehistoric nordic i don't know what norsemen you know are doing in north africa but fine and well the amorites founded jerusalem and they formed the nordic weft in later galilee that is, in the pagan region where Jesus is said to have come from. So the Amorites founded Jerusalem. Let's have a look. First of all, Jerusalem was founded by the Jebusites, not the Amorites. So their history is very, very suspect. Jesus, according to the Nazis, was an Aryan Nordic Amorite. The Amorites are Mesopotamian, right? Jesus, of course, as you know, everyone loves to claim. Um, yes, I'll, I'll be finishing in one minute. Um, I just got in Lloyd to be banger to see you on Jay Dyer talking about the conspiracy truths you're welcome speak to Jay Dyer drop him comments in his chat drop him comments and I'll, I'll do it so people claim everyone wants a piece of Jesus right because of his because he is such an example of morality Jesus is a Gnostic Jesus was adopted Jesus never existed Jesus was a wise man Jesus was an apparition Jesus was a Mormon Jesus was a Jehovah's Witness Jesus was black Jesus is a Muslim Everybody wants a piece of Jesus in their own image. Understand, everybody wants Jesus in their own image. So now he's an Aryan Nordic Amorite. So he's an Aryan, which is like Indian Persian, Nordic, which is like Norwegian, Swedish, Amorite, Mesopotamian. So Jesus is an Indian, Iranian, Nordic, Swedish, Mesopotamian, Iranian, Iraqi, whatever. Understand, so all of these people were basically trying to co-opt the Bible and co-opt Jesus for their own purposes, right? <clears throat>
So Jesus was superimposed, limited human concepts of God. That's the trend of all of this. Yes, it's always the same. Yeah, Jesus either never existed or was anything but a Jew. Yeah, I mean, so understand everybody wants to claim because Christianity has such a powerful message and Jesus is the greatest moral figure to ever live. That's why everyone wants to co-opt him. So guys, I will finish here. Hopefully this has been educational. Hopefully you've learned a great deal. Um, understand, I want to try and make this academic and definitive so that we can understand that the Nazis were anything but Christian. They were fake Christians through and through. They were Gnostics. They were occultists. They were anything but Christian. Yes, they're claiming what they do not have, Paulus. That is true. Violation of the Ten Commandments. Thou shalt not steal. And that is true. But yes. So I am sorry if I missed any of the things in the chat, but I'm trying to focus on this on this lesson. All right. I hope this has been entertaining. I hope it's been educational. I will end here. I'll see you guys on Thursday evening on my channel. I will do part two of this and I will be on with Sam Shamoon on his channel on Wednesday evening at about 7.30 p.m. Warsaw time. That's 6.30 p.m. London time. That's 1.30 p.m. I believe New York time. So guys, thank you very much. I hope you've had a good time and um, please take care. Think, research, learn. All right, do click the like and thank you again very much for the donations. I really do appreciate it. I've spent hours and hours and hours on this to try and make this. And the books are available. The references are available. Please download them. Look through them. Thank you. Have a good night. God bless.